So as I've recently come into having a, a good bit of free time here, I thought I'd start putting together some more tutorials. Uh, why instead of uh, just one, I thought I'd put together seven, uh, make a whole week of it. So this is going to be the first of uh, seven in a row that I'll be putting out. Um, and it's not going to cover not just um, pony specific, but SFM in general. A bit. Um, and it's not just the basics, I still feel that the SFM group uh, that Valve has for tutorials still does a great job. But uh, just cover some some tips, hopefully that can help people out. And one of the first things I wanted to do here uh, for for the first one here was to show how to use animation cycles. Um, if you don't know what a cycle is, um, a cycle is uh, it's a file that already has a saved animation to it. So you could have a run cycle uh, or a, a fly cycle to help save some uh, some time in animating and using something that either you've made or somebody else made. So to load it up here, um, actually. We'll, uh, let me open up DeviantArt here. The, the, the group on DeviantArt has quite a bit of, uh, of, of resources available to you. So if you head over to, uh, to DA, to the, uh, the SFM Ponies group, um, you can go to the, the folder here, uh, SFM resource. And you, if you scroll through here, you'll find that there's a lot of different cycles that you can download that people have created, and uh, whether it's running from headbang to to running, walking, flying, even uh, I believe there's one in here for just uh, stationary breathing to give a little bit of life to your model. Um, it, you can go through here and just try to see which ones you like here. Um, when you download the file, it'll come as a DMX file, um, and a DMX file is the animation file. Uh, if you uh, if you want to look at this, these are this is my collection that I have, and I have a, a folder I've made under my user mod folder that's just called DMX, and inside here I have all my DMX files. Uh, these, so these all contain an animation of some sort. Um, I like to have it in its own little folder, just so then I can keep everything organized and I know a central location to go to them for. Uh, once you have that downloaded in a place that you, the location that you know of, um, you can load it onto the model. Um, I'm going to show you the way that you probably don't want to do it first to show you what happens and then uh, we can um, I'll show you how to do it correctly. Um, normally when you, have, you can just select the whole model here and you go to import and animation. By doing that you go to your directory, it's already here for me and I'm going to open up uh, the flying fast here, just the fast flight one. If you hit open you might notice that suddenly uh, after you hit OK your model will disappear. Um, it hasn't actually been removed, it's just moved. Um, in this case, it moved back here. Um, this is because you have the root transform selected. And it's going to go to whatever the XYZ position it was when it was created. And if it's in a certain map, it may be way out in the distance. And this happened to be created in the stage map here, so it's still within a visible distance. But it may be difficult to get the model back. So I'm going to go back here, and what you want to do when you're loading it, is uh, you want to deselect the root transform. If you select or the whole model here and hold control and just select the root transform, it'll deselect that. Then if you right-click parts that are selected, say this bit, you can still go to import animation. Let's load that uh, flying fast again. And OK. And now you notice it stays in place. That's because we did not load up the root transform. We deselected it and only loaded it into the piece that we wanted to load into. So now that you have your, your cycle here, uh, you're free to use it how you want. Uh, I recommend, if, if you're going to use a cycle even just once, to have a separate model that has that cycle saved to it. So in this case, I'm going to rename this cycle, uh, this model, to, uh, well, not frying, flying fast. So now that's all that this model has. It's not going to be used for, for any, any actual animation. So I'm going to load up another dash model here. And move uh, move this one out of the way here. All right. So this would be the one that I would be animating then. Why, the reason I do this is that I can load up, uh, I can load up any any piece or any amount of time from the dash model here onto this model, and not have to worry about it importing. Because if I were to import to this model, it, if I had made any changes to, to its motion in any way, it would be overridden by that animation cycle, even the empty space back here. So you want to make sure that you have it a little bit more control. So let's actually work on getting it pasted here. Uh, first, I'm going to show you how to 
extend the cycle here because this is a repeated cycle but after 10 seconds here it stops and the model just freezes what if you want it to go longer than that well what we're going to do uh and this cycle had uh well, let me shift the time a little bit here and the next next video i'll be showing how to do motion editor tricks on how to shift time like that um so the cycle starts at zero and it goes to 10. Now, one thing to remember when you have a repeated cycle like this is what frame rate it was created in. Um, the author may not put that uh, out, information out, but you can pretty easily tell. I created this originally in 24 frames per second. I'm running in 30. Because of that difference, you're going to notice when you zoom in on the timeline here that you can't actually select the end of the animation. It's because that has a little partial frame that happened to be in there because of the difference between the frame rates. I'll show how to fix that in a sec though. So with the 0 to 10 selected, we're going to go Control C to copy, or you can just right click to copy samples. And then if you drag the motion editor here, you can move it so and position it so it's at the end of the 10, and then just Control V or paste samples. Now we're, we have our cycle repeated here. But you'll notice there's going to be a little bit of a hiccup here, uh, right at the uh, this midpoint. It's maybe not noticeable, but uh, it might cause some problems with jiggles. If you want to get rid of that, uh, you can just select a very, very minor piece right here, just this little bit, and hit it with the, the procedural tool around here. I'll show again tomorrow how to work that tool a little bit more. That will actually clean up and smooth that out so you won't even notice that there's that hiccup. Uh, if you then you can then repeat this for selecting the 0 to 20 to extend it to 40 do whatever you want uh, but now you have a 20 seconds of a cycle uh, so now we want to copy it to the other model here that we have so let's say we wanted to copy it from this point to this point we're gonna make sure that model selected control C copy it and now we'll go back to this model and just the same as we had it when loading up the um, uh, the cycle if you were to just paste, you're going to have that root transform issue. So the same way here, make sure you deselect the root transform, and now you can paste. There, now we have the flight animations copied over. Um, you can add a little bit of transition here. As you see here, this is a quick jump. Before you've actually uh, baked this um, this animation pasting, you can pull out the, the fallout here and actually let it give it a little bit of a transition so that it looks like it's coming up to that point. Obviously this is not going to be the best uh, the best transition for here but it's just getting the point across how you can you can save yourself a little time there or you can use the round tool or some of the other tools to do a similar effect. But um, yeah that's uh, that's about all I actually wanted to cover with uh, with the, the hot loading and animation cycle. It's not really that difficult but it can save you a lot a lot of time um, and hopefully, uh, hopefully you can make use of the resources uh, that you can be found in the A folder in DeviantArt. Uh, I'll put a link in the description to, so that you don't have to actually go find it yourself. Um, if you had any other questions on it, uh, you can feel free to leave it in the comments. Otherwise, uh, stay tuned for the next few days. I'll be coming out with uh, a bunch more tips. And like I mentioned, tomorrow I'm going to do one for some of the uh, tips for how to work the motion editor here because I'm not a graph editor person I like the motion editor and I uh, just know a lot of people don't know some of the tricks on how to take advantage of it so um so yeah subscribe uh, if you want to make sure that you keep up to date on it otherwise uh, good luck in uh, getting making some pony animations <laughs>